Today I wanted to work on adding a little bit of animation to a side project of mine. Uh, this is a little fitness tracking app that I made uh, just to help me, you know, keep track of my goals during the week. And I just have these goals right here. You can open them up. You can say, you know, I didn't drink on Tuesday or I had healthy meals on Wednesday and Thursday. You can save them. And uh, these bars kind of show you where you're at. So. I have some ideas for some interactions I want to add to this app using Framer Motion. I'd like these bars to kind of grow uh, smoothly as you complete goals or as the app renders initially. And I also have an idea for an interaction for um, checking off different days for your goals that would use some animation and make it feel a little bit more satisfying. So. Uh, I've used Framer Motion a little bit in the past, but not a ton. And so I really just wanted to turn on the camera and just code for a little bit and just see what it feels like to kind of work with Framer Motion with this kind of re real world use case and um, just see how far I get. And I'll just kind of stop it if I, you know, finish different parts of it and let you know what it was like to work with it, you know, what the frustrating parts were, any tricks I learned along the way. So without further ado, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and get started here and I'll slow it down when I get to anything interesting and let you know uh, any updates. Okay, so um, I have the initial rendering here working for the bars on the home page. Um, they basically just render in. I tweaked the duration and transition a little bit here. I used a half a second duration, and then because I'm mapping over these goals, I just use the index to increase the delay, so I have this kind of staggering effect. And I liked using this duration property because the default animation with Framer Motion is the spring, and so the bars would kind of go past their endpoint and bounce a little bit. And I think just a time-based uh, duration here makes a little bit more sense. So uh, this is how it looks when the app first loads. And I think that looks pretty good. Now, if you go to a category and you come back, we see that the animations uh, basically run again. And so I really only want those animations to run the very first time you open the app. And then if you were to come here and change this, once the app transitions back to the home page, I would want to show the old bar and then it transitions smoothly to the new value because I think it does that right now. Um, it's just an instant transition. So I'd like to use frame or motion to make that smooth. Um, and I'd also like to go ahead and add that to uh, this right here. So when you check these, this is smooth. So let me first uh, add this because I think this will be easier. And then we'll work on making sure that this home screen animation only happens the first time you load the app so that uh, it only runs if you're going from a loading state to uh, the state with data. Okay, so that was uh, pretty easy. Um, I just made it so that these transition, you know, if you toggle a day, it just smoothly transitions. And let me actually go ahead and explain to you how I did that because I realized I didn't do that on the home page. But if you've never used firmer motion before, uh, I can go ahead and undo this series of steps here. And this is what we had before. Uh, it's pretty simple. So I just had this div with a style attribute and I was calculating the width here based on how many entries I have over my goal total. And that's how this gets this percentage of 100% right here. So the steps to use this are basically to update your div to a motion.div. And you'll want to go ahead and import motion from Framer Motion. And then instead of using style, uh, you just use this animate prop. And well, that will basically take care of this and it'll animate the width. And so you can see right there, you know, if I start out on this goal, we see some animation. And now as I select these, uh, the bar animates. But again, this default spring animation is a little bit much for me. So that's why I just come over here and grab um, just this transition prop. 
and go ahead and set this to 0 0.5. And this kind of puts frame or motion in this more time-based easing mode, uh, just so that it's a little bit smoother. So now we can see it's a little bit smoother. And then again, if you notice here, uh, if we look at the initial render of this, it's kind of starting from some random place. We want this to actually not animate when we start. So we'll go ahead and pass in this initial prop and we'll just use exactly the same thing here. So that way when we transition to a goal from the home page, uh, it doesn't animate because it's already kind of full. The bar is already full. But now when we click this, it always animates to the new value. So I kind of like how that looks. And um, that's basically uh, the basics of how you animate these properties with frame or motion. So now I'm going to work on getting it so that this home page only animates the first time. Okay, I think I got this working. So uh, I've used this before, this little use previous hook, which is just a little hook um, I copied from you know this website. There's a bunch of places where it is and the React docs even say it may one day be added to React. But this is basically this is a way to track a value over time. So the way you use this hook is um, you give it a value and it uses an effect to update a ref's current property to that value. But because it's an effect, this happens uh, after render. So that once you're actually using this in your component, the value of this ref in any given render pass is going to be the value that you passed in from the previous render. So in general, refs are kind of a way to communicate across renders. You know, in React, our uh, function renders are supposed to kind of be isolated and independent from one another, but sometimes you need to communicate across renders and refs are basically the way to do that. And refs and effects combine to give us this nice little use previous abstraction. You can see why this might be added to React one day, but basically uh, we can use it to say, okay, what was the data on the previous render um, compared to now? And so I wanted to use this because, let's go ahead and just put this back should animate render, we'll just make it true all the time. Uh, this is kind of where we left off. And this meant that these bars always rendered, right? But I really only wanted them to render the first time you load the app. Well, the first time you load the app, you don't have the data. So the data is going from undefined to um, defined, right? Once the network request comes back. But because I don't have to uh, load after that, because I render from cache based on the data fetching library I'm using, I want this to just be sync. I want it to just be instant and to not animate. And so the way I can proxy that is to say, well, if I ever go back and render this home page and I don't go from a loading state to a fulfilled state, go ahead and disable the animation. So that's why I wanted to use previous. So I go ahead and use my previous hook. I pass in the data. And this was kind of my first attempt. Let's just say I'll pass in the data here. And then uh, should animate initial render is just going to be if the last render, I didn't have data. So if previous data uh, was empty, then I should go ahead and animate it. So I tried this. And you'll see that it didn't work. And I was expecting it not to work on the initial render, but I was surprised that uh, it didn't work right here. And this is because 
when I come back, we render from cache, and this is actually going to be the very first render of this component. So previous data is always going to be undefined, so should animate is always going to be true because the very first render, this thing is undefined. So then I figured out, you know what I need to do? I need to go ahead and pass in data, uh, but if data is not defined, I need to pass in null, and that way I can differentiate between my ref uh, being undefined, meaning it's the first render, or being null, meaning the data has come back, and now that we're actually in a situation where we're going from uh, data loading to a loaded state. So this is what I did. I said, if we don't have data, go ahead and set that previous data ref to null. Now we can know if it's the first render. And now we can say, when should we animate? Well, we should animate if it's the first render and I don't have any data, or if we're going from a state where previous data is equal to null, which means we've definitely already done a render pass and now our data is just loading. So with that logic, if we save it, we should see an animation on the initial load of the app. And we do. And now when I click a category and go back, we don't see an animation. Now this, this week one is just kind of doing its own thing because we haven't updated that yet. But for these categories, we don't see an animation. And again, that's because we do have an initial render, uh, but we do have data. So this is going to be false right here. But this should also work if I were to actually load the app on a goal. Go ahead and refresh this. And then I click back. This is the first time that we render this list and we do see the animation. So we can see now our little logic here uh, takes account of, of all the code paths that we can take to get to this list. And so this is pretty cool now because, um, you know, this is working. And um, if I can show you exactly how I'm using this Boolean right here, and uh, I'm just passing it into my little summary component. And down here, exactly where I set before the width on initial and animate, I just say, if we should animate uh, the initial render, go ahead and start out our width at zero so it kind of grows. Uh, otherwise, we're going to use exactly the same value we have for here. And that way, there's going to be no animation because the initial and end state are exactly the same. But uh, because we are rendering these bars with this animate prop, if I were to come to the app, Go ahead and add Wednesday for CrossFit and hit save. Look at that. When we come back to the home page, um, we'll see as the data fetching query from use SWR refreshes this query on the home page in the background and it finds those new records. Uh, it's going to go ahead and animate from the old value to the new value. So this is basically uh, exactly the behavior that I wanted. Um, and it just makes it a little bit more satisfying to go ahead and, you know, tick this off, get an extra day, come back, and then see uh, your bars go back up on the home page. Now, um, the last thing I want to do here is fix this uh summary this week bar down here because we can see it's kind of animating every single time and I think we want to just apply the exact same treatment that we gave the other bars so uh, let me do that right now. Okay, so I think I have it all working now. Um, if we go ahead and reload the app, we should see all these bars animate on initial render, and they do. Let's go ahead and close the dev tools here. And uh, as I click around the app, we'll see that you know it renders kind of sync because all the data is there. And so every time we render that home page, we don't see the animations. But now if I were to come here to category and go ahead and add a day. Now we'll see both the, the goal and the summary here uh, get those updates. So that's pretty cool because those are just updating in the background. This query is just rerunning again. And when that new data comes back, um, we basically just see all that update. And uh, over here in the code, I actually went ahead and updated this variable name to be is animating initial render because 
it wasn't so much about whether it should or not. It's just whether the conditions were such that it is rendering it. And um, it's also because I wanted to use this Boolean outside of just this initial um, prop. So basically, if we come and look where I use this first, we were using it right here, right? But if you'll notice uh, down here, I actually use it on the delay now as well. So just to refresh you, if I reload this, the first time this renders, we see kind of this staggering effect and it just makes it look a little nicer. And we do that by using this delay prop. But uh, I had that set before so that if I came here to the last category, toggled it and came back, it would actually be delayed. But I didn't want that. I wanted it to animate right away. And so now we just know based on whether or not it's animating the initial render to stagger or not. And so I can just use it like that. And in the same way, I can come down here and actually use it on my duration for my this week summary. On the initial render here, the this week part takes a little bit longer, again, to kind of give it this uh, perception that it's totaling all these up. But if I toggle just a single entry within a goal and come back, I want it to match. And so I'm using that Boolean there again as well. So uh, that's about it. And, you know, the few times I have used frame or motion, I found myself using refs to control this sort of thing. Um, frame or motion is meant to be this declarative paradigm where you really embrace React's declarative rendering model and um, represent the different states of your animations kind of declaratively. But, you know, as we've seen here, sometimes it can be a little tricky because there's more pathways through your app than you might think the first time. So I found that getting practice with refs and being able to kind of communicate across render cycles in this way to know whether we're transitioning from a loaded to a loaded state for the first time or we're doing our first render directly from cache, in which case we don't want to transition. It's good to get reps in with use ref and use effect so you can do this kind of thing and have complete control over your animation. So uh, I have a few more ideas for interactions I wanna add to this app, but um, I think I'm gonna wrap this video up uh, for now. And I think in the next one, I'll work on one of these interactions and make it more of a tutorial style and kind of teach you where I ended up. I'd like to make it so that when you, you click on this, it actually opens up below it right here on the screen. And I know Framer Motion has some layout stuff that it can use to kind of smoothly expand and, con and contract um, different accordion panels. And so I'd like the days to show up here, long press, fill it up, and that's all you have to do. So uh, hopefully I'll get that working and be able to share that with you. But otherwise, uh, let me know if you have any questions. And thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.